All right, so now for example number two, similar scenario. We're given x plus one over x minus four equals zero. This one is uh, our lowest common denominator is x minus 4. So that is what we want to multiply everything by. So on my next line I'm going to have uh, x minus 4 times something and then x minus 4 times something and then x minus 4 times something. Let's fill in the somethings. x plus this over okay you guys with me so far alright so now for the next line when I push this x through using the distributive property I get x squared minus 4x over here this cancels with this and I just get plus 1 and then 0 times this is 0, and that times 0 is 0, so that whole thing equals 0. Hey, I could solve that. That's quadratic, right? So let's do that. Um, x squared and 1. Uh-oh. How do I multiply two numbers to get 1, and then when I add those two numbers up, I get negative 4. How do I do that? Remember that when we factor it, this plus this has to equal this. Problem is, is 1, there's only two factors for 1, right? 1 and 1. I mean, there, there aren't. I could do like 4 and negative, or I could do 4 and one fourth or eight and one eighth, but like it won't work out to be negative four. So now what do I do? Yes. Quadratic equation. So I see that this is written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, right? So then what I have is a is equal to one, b is equal to negative four, and c is equal to one. Now the quadratic formula states that if I take x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. Is that correct? So then x is equal to negative b which is negative 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared minus 4 times a which is 1 times c which is 1 all over 2 times a which is 1. Am I doing good so far? You guys with me so far? Whew, it's a lot of work. So then this becomes x is equal to positive 4 plus or minus the square root of. Now this is all just negative 4, right? And then 14 squared is just 16. Am I doing good so far? So what's 16 minus 4? 12 all over 2. Is that correct so far? All right, so now 12 can be reduced. Isn't that the same as Can I do that? Yes, Mr. Adams, you could do that, right? Because 4 times 3 is 12. Those are the properties of radicals. But what is the square root of 4? 2. So on my next line, I've got x is equal to 4 plus or minus this uh, 2 root 3 all over 2. Now, wait a minute. Can I do this? Can I say x is equal to 4 over 2 plus or minus? 2 root 3 over 2. Can I do that? I won't move forward until I see everybody's head nodding. 
Yes, okay. So now then x is equal to two plus or minus, because this cancels and then this reduces to two over one, um, root three, right? Which is two plus root three or two minus root three. How do I verify that? Well, what is 2 plus root 3? Well, I don't know if you guys have memorized this yet. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. But you guys do know that the square root of 3 is approximately 1.73, right? You guys know that, right? So that means that x could possibly be 0.268 or x could possibly be 3.7. 3, 2. All right? That's just taking 2 and adding the 1.73 or subtracting the 1.73. They carried it out an extra decimal point. They, they, they did a little 2 there. All right, so now how do I verify all that? Well, remember that our original equation was this bit, bad boy right here. So we went from here all the way down to, to here rather quickly, I might add. So the first thing I could do is just graph this expression. It's already set equal to zero. So I could say, um, let's slide this over. What was that? I could say x plus 1 divided by the quantity x minus 4 and graph it. And we're looking for where it equals zero. And so I'm just going to hit second trace to get into the calc menu. Go down, whoops, I want the zeros. And a little bit to the left of the zero. A little bit to the right of the zero. And then where I think it is, which is in the middle. 2.67, I had 2.68, so if you round it, right? Isn't that what I had? The first one? So far we're doing okay. So now let's do another zero, shall we? So if we say second trace, and now I'm going to come a little bit to the left again still, right? Why do I know that I have to be to the left? Because the calculator says right here, left bound, question mark. Hit enter. Go a little bit to the right. Oops, a little bit to the right. Hit enter. And somewhere in the middle is where that should be. But that's about as close as I could get. So I'm just going to hit enter. 3.732. That's what I said, right? Okay, that's it. Any questions? Yeah. 